Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, May June 2022, paper 2 1, question number 3. This is structured paper 2, which consists 4 questions, 2 of 30 marks and 2 of 15 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 1 hour 30 minutes. And since question number 3 is of 15 marks, we will be attempting to solve this question under 15 minutes. Now, without any further delay, let's get started. Maria and Rio have been in partnership for a number of years. They are considering admitting a new partner. And for the first part of this question, we need to say three disadvantages to the existing partners when a new partner is admitted. So we're talking about partnership, right? And when there is a new admission of a partner, then the profits will have to be shared with the new partner as well, right? Which will reduce the share of profit for the existing partners. That is a disadvantage. Let's write it down. Profit will be shared with the new partner then the second disadvantage would be that since there is an increase in the number of partners decision making could take longer because there might be various inputs from different number of partners right which could take a lot of time let's write it down decision making could take longer and then the third disadvantage would be that there might be a risk of there might be a risk of disagreement because the new partner might have a different view of how the partnership should be run as compared to the existing partners which might create some sort of disagreements right let's write it down there is the risk of disagreements okay and this concludes the first part of this question now we can move towards the second one we are given additional information the partnership year end is 31st december and for the period 1st january to 30 september 2021 maria and rio did not have a partnership agreement so whenever there is no partnership agreement it means that the profits and losses are shared equally and any loan from the partners to the partnership will get the interest of 5%. And there will be no interest on capital as well as no interest on drawings. All right. Then the following information is available for the year ended 31st December 2021. Mm -hmm. The balances on the partner's account on 1st January 2021. This is the opening date, right? So this is the opening capital account balances for Maria and Rio. And Rio had the loan provided to the partnership amounting to 6000 then on 1st October 2021, they admitted Sarah as a partner and Sarah introduced capital of 45000 from her personal savings. The partners agreed to make no adjustments for goodwill or the revaluation of the partnership assets. Then from 1st October 2021, a formal partnership agreement was prepared. All right. And as part of that particular formal partnership agreement, Rio is to be given interest on his loan at 8%. So previously, the interest would have been 5% without any presence of a partnership. So I'm just going to write it down. No agreement. Loan would get 5% interest. Then interest to be given at 6% per annum on fixed capitals. So this is just the interest on the capital accounts. And without any formal agreement, the interest would be zero. And Rio is to be given a partnership salary of 15,000 per annum. In case of no partnership agreement, no one receives any salary. Then profits is to be shared in the ratio of Maria to Rio to Sarah as 2 is to 1 is to 2. And when we're talking about no partnership agreement, the profits and losses are shared equally. All right, now let's have a look at our second question. All right, we're also given additional information. During the year ended 31st December 2021, the partnership made a profit of 82,500 before taking into account interest on Rio's loan. So this is before interest paid on Rio's loan. It was assumed that the profit before interest on Rio's loan had accrued evenly throughout the year. All right, now we need to prepare the appropriation account for the year ended 31st December 2021. And this is a bit tricky because for the date of 1st January to 30 September, we only had two partners, Maria and Rio, and we had no partnership agreements, right? But for the date of 1st October to 31st December, we had a new partner, Sarah, as well, and there was a partnership agreement. Okay. We will start with our profit before interest because we are told that the partnership made a profit of 82500 for this particular year before interest payments. So that's profit before interest. 
and we're also told that it was assumed that the profit before interest on Rio's loan had accrued evenly throughout the year, which means that this profit for this year of 82,500 can be divided equally among the 12 months of this particular accounting year. So for two partners, Mario and Rio, we can see that this ranged from 1st January to 30 September, which is nine months, right? And for Maria, Rio and Sarah, this range from 1st October to 31st December, which is three months. So we need to divide this profit, 82,500 of 12 months, to nine months and three months. So let's do that. So for 12 months, we have 82,500. Now for nine months, that's going to be 82,500. And we only require nine months out of the 12 months. So we're just going to multiply it with nine and divide it with 12, which gives the profit before interest for the month which gives the profit before interest for 1st January to 30 September to be 61,875. Now we repeat the same process for three months. That's going to be 82,500. And we only require the profit for three months out of the 12 months. So we're just going to multiply it with three and divide it by 12, which gives the profit before interest for 1st October to 31st December to be 20,625. So let's write these amounts into our appropriation account. That's going to be 61,875 and 20,625. So we only have profit before interest, but we require our profits for appropriation, right? Which you can only get after subtracting the interest, right? So less interest on Rio's loan. All right, now... We know that for these nine months, we had no partnership agreement, which means that the interest on any partner's loan would be 5%, right? So we need to figure out 5% of Rio's loan. Let's calculate it. We can see that Rio's loan was 6,000. So 5% of it would be 6,000 times 5%, which we can write down as 0 0.05. And remember that this would give the interest charge for 12 months, but we are only required to figure out nine months interest charge. So that would be times nine out of 12, right? So this gives the interest on Rio's loan for 1st January to 31st September to be 6,000 times 0 0.05 times nine by 12, which is 225. Let's write it in our appropriation account. And remember that we are subtracting this interest on loan, right? So I'm just going to record it in a bracket. Now for the remaining three months, we know that there was a partnership agreement, right? Let's have a look above. And we can see that it was stated Rio to be given interest on his loan at 8% per annum. So now we need to figure out 8% of Rio's loan. So that would be 6,000 times 8%, which we can write down as 0 0.08. Again, remember that this would provide the interest charge for 12 months, but we only require the interest charge for three months. So that's just going to be times three by 12, which gives interest on Rio's loan for the three months to be 6,000 times 0 0.08 times three by 12, which results in 120. So let's record this value into our appropriation account. That is 120 and we need to deduct this interest charge. So I'm just going to put it in a bracket. Now we can easily figure out our profit for appropriation now for these nine months that's going to be 61,875 minus 225 which results in the value of 61,650 and for the remaining three months that's going to be 20,625 minus 120 which results in the value of 20,505 now we can move towards the appropriations. But remember that appropriation only takes place when there is a formal partnership agreement. When there is no partnership agreement, there is no interest on capital and no interest on drawings, which means that the profit for appropriation is just equally divided among the partners. So it does not require any appropriations, right? So the appropriations will only be present for the remaining three months. Let's write it down. So this is appropriations. for final three months. Okay, and the first thing that falls under appropriation would be interest on capital. So we know that the partners invest a fixed capital in this partnership, right? 
and the interest on capital is something that the partnership pays back to the partners for their investment as fixed capitals. So this is to be paid to the partners, which means that this would definitely reduce the profits. So interest on capital should basically be deducted from profits for appropriation. So we need to provide interest on capital for our three partners, Maria, Rio, and Sarah. So let's have a look above at our partnership agreement. We are told that interest is to be given at 6% per annum on fixed capitals, right? So let's figure out 6% of Maria's capital balance. So that's just going to be 52,000, which is the balance on capital account for Maria, times 6%, which you can write down as 0 0.06. But this would provide the interest on capital for 12 months. And we are only figuring out the appropriation section for the remaining three months, which means that we only require the interest on capital for three months out of the 12 months. So that's just going to be times three by 12 which gives the interest on capital for Maria to be 52,000 times 0 0.06 times 3 by 12, which results in the value of 780. Let's write it down. So for Maria, that's 780. And like I said before, interest on capital reduces the profits for appropriation. So I'm just going to record it in a bracket, indicating that this needs to be subtracted. Now we repeat the same process for Rio. We can see that the balance on Rio's capital account is 38,000. So that's 38,000 times 6%, which we can write down as 0 0.06. And we only require the interest on capital for three months out of the 12 months. So that's times three by 12, which gives interest on capital for Rio to be 38,000 times 0 0.06 times three by 12, which results in the value of 570. Let's write it down. So that's 570 for Rio. And finally, we need to figure it out for Sarah as well. And we are told that Sarah introduced a capital of 45,000. So that is just going to be 45,000 times 6%, which you can write down as 0 0.06. And again, we only require the interest on capital for three months out of the 12 months. So that's going to be times 3 by 12, which gives the interest on capital for Sarah to be 45,000 times 0 0.06 times 3 by 12, which results in the value of 675. Let's write it down. So this concludes the interest on capital section. Now let's have a look at the partnership agreement again. We are not given any drawings and we are not given any information on the former partnership agreement regarding interest on drawings as well, right? Then we are told that Rio is to be given a partnership salary of 15,000. So this basically means that the partnership needs to pay out 15,000 as salary to Rio, which would definitely reduce the profit of the partnership, right? So this 15,000 should be deducted. But remember that this 15,000 is per annum, but we're only appropriating for the remaining three months. So we need to figure out Rio's salary for three months. That's going to be 15,000 times three by 12, which gives Rio's partnership salary for the three months to be 3,750. Let's write this amount. So that's salary for Rio. And we figured it out to be 3,750. Like I said before, this reduces the profit. So I'm just going to record it in a bracket, indicating that this needs to be subtracted. Now we can easily figure out our divisible profit. For the first nine months, that's going to be the same as profits for appropriation, which is 61,650. And for the remaining three months, now we need to calculate it. So that's just going to be profits for appropriation minus interest on capital minus salary. So that's 20,505 minus 780 minus 570 minus 675 minus 3,750, which results in the divisible profit to be 14,730. All right, so now we need to distribute this profit among the partners. So we can term it as shares of remaining profit. And we have three partners. So that's Maria, Rio, and Sarah. Now, for the first nine months, we only had two partners, Maria and Rio, and we had no partnership agreements, which means that the profits should be shared equally. 
So let's divide the divisible profit, 61,650. This needs to be divided among two partners. So we can just divide it by two, which results in the share of profit for both Maria and Rio to be 61,650 divided by two, which results in 30,825. Let's write it down. 30,825 and 30,825. Now, for the last three months, there was an additional partner, Sarah, and we have a partnership agreement. So, we are given our profit sharing ratio as well. So, Maria to Rio to Sarah, that's 2 is to 1 is to 2, which means that out of 5 portions, 2 will be received by Mario, 1 will be received by Rio, and 2 will be received by Sarah. So, let's figure it out. We have the divisible profit of 14,730, right? So, out of 14,730... Two parts out of five parts will be received by both Maria and Sarah. So let's figure that out. So that's times two by five, which gives the share of profit for Maria and Sarah to be 14,730 times two by five, which results in the value of 5,892. Let's write it down for Maria as well as Sarah. And we know that one out of five parts will be received by Rio. So that's going to be 14,730 times 1 by 5, which results in the share of profit for Rio to be 14,730 times 1 by 5, which results in the value of 2,946. Let's write it down. Now, this concludes the appropriation account as well as the second part of this question. So we can move towards the third one. We are given additional information. Before Sarah had been admitted as a partner, she had been earning a salary of 18,000 per annum and she had also received interest of 8% per annum on her personal savings. So let's have a look above to see if we are given the amount of her personal savings. Okay, we are told that 45,000 was actually from her personal savings. So we're just going to assume that her entire personal savings was 45,000. Let's write it down. Okay, now for the third part, we need to compare Sarah's income as a partner with the total income she would have otherwise received in the three months ended 31st December 2021. Okay, so let's figure out Sarah's income in employment. So we are told that she would be earning a salary of 18,000 per annum. So let's figure out the salary for three months. If she is earning 18,000 per annum, so that's the salary for 12 months, but we only require the salary for 3 months, which means that we can just multiply it with 3 and divide it by 12, which gives Sarah's salary for 3 months to be 18,000 times 3 by 12, which results in the value of 4,500. And we're also told that she received interest of 8% per annum on her personal savings, so let's figure out the interest. That is just going to be her entire personal savings, which is 45,000, and she is receiving 8% interest. So we multiply it with 0 0.08. But remember that this would give the interest for 12 months, but we only require the interest charge for 3 months. So we can just multiply by 3 and divide it with 12, which gives the interest for 3 months to be 45,000 times 0 0.08 times 3 by 12, which results in the value of 900. So her total income. would just be salary plus interest so that's 4500 plus 900 which results in the total income to be 5400 now we need to figure out her income as a partner so that's as a partner so her share of profit would be an income right let's have a look above so we figured out Sarah's share of profit to be 5,892. Let's write it down. And she also received interest on capital. That is also an income, right? Let's have a look above. We already figured out as well. So interest on capital for Sarah is right here, which amounted to 675. Let's write it down. So her total income as a partner would be the sum of share of profit and the interest on capital. So that's 5,892 plus 675, which results in her total income to have the value of 6,567. 
So previously she used to earn 5,400, whereas now she will be earning 6,567, which means that there is definitely an increase in income, right? Let's figure out the increase. That is just going to be the difference between the total income as a partner and in employment. So that's 6,567 as a partner minus 5,400 in employment, which gives her increase in income to be 1,167. All right, this concludes the third part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.